In this presentation, I'm going to look at the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC. In separate presentations, I have covered the cost of debt and the cost of equity, being the returns required to keep debt holders and shareholders satisfied. In practice, firms will often raise finance from a number of sources simultaneously and so they will need to be able to calculate the overall or average return required. Specifically, this presentation will cover the meaning of the WAC, calculating the WAC, limitations of the WAC, and a project-specific cost of capital. Let's look at each of these in turn. The meaning of the WAC. When investors put money into a company, whether they do so in the form of debt or equity, they are looking for a return on their investment. In order that the company can make appropriate investment decisions, i.e. ensure the return anticipated is sufficient, they need to estimate the level of return required. An added complication is that different investors face different levels of risk and so will have different expectations as to the return they require. Accordingly, the various returns required have to be averaged to obtain the overall cost to the company and it is this that is referred to as the weighted average cost of capital. Calculating the WAC the easiest way to approach the calculation of the WAC is to think of it as a four-step process. 1. Identify the sources of finance. 2. For each source, identify the market value. 3. For each source, identify the cost. And 4. Combine the information in the WAC formula. Sources of finance have been discussed separately in the Sources of Finance presentation and similarly the cost of debt and equity have been covered elsewhere. The market value of finance will be the value at which the source can be traded. For equity this equates to the number of shares in issue multiplied by the share price whilst for debt this will be the number of bonds multiplied by the quoted price per bond. Remember that this quoted price can also be expressed as a percentage of the nominal value. Finally, if one of the sources is a bank loan, it does not have a market value, it cannot be traded, and so the loan amount is used instead. The WAC formula can be expressed as the cost of equity multiplied by the market value of equity and divided by the market value of equity plus the market value of debt, i.e. the cost of equity multiplied by the proportion of the total finance represented by equity. This is added to the cost of debt multiplied by the market value of debt and divided by the market value of equity plus the market value of debt. This assumes that there are two sources of finance, one equity and one debt. However, any number of sources can be accommodated by applying the above logic i.e. the cost multiplied by the proportion of the total represented by the source under consideration. Limitations of the WAC As discussed in the Sources of Finance presentation, there is a direct link between the risk faced by investors and the return required by them. Accordingly, when a company calculates its WAC, it is based on current risk levels. The limitation this presents is that if they are trying to identify the return that will be required from a project under consideration, they are, in effect, assuming that the project will not change the underlying risk profile of the company. 
Further, the WAC can only be used where this is the case. The risk profile refers to both the relative proportions of debt and equity, the financial risk, and the business area of the new project compared to the current company, the business risk. If either or both of these changes, then it is no longer appropriate to use the existing WAC as the measure against which the project is assessed. If this is the case, then a marginal or project-specific cost of capital should be derived and used to assess the project. This process is discussed further below. A project-specific cost of capital. As discussed above, the total risk faced by an organisation can be broken down into two elements. One, business risk, and two, financial risk. It is essential that the return required from a project takes changes in both of these into account to ensure that the anticipated return is sufficient compensation for the risk taken on by investors. Where a project being considered will change the business risk of an organisation, the following approach can be adopted. 1. Find a similar company that already operates in the new business area, a proxy company, and identify their beta. Betas were introduced in the cost of equity presentation. This beta recognises the total risk profile of the proxy, both business and financial, and is referred to as an equity or geared beta. 2. Whilst this beta reflects the business risk of the new project, it is unlikely that relative debt levels in the proxy and the project will be the same. Accordingly, strip out the financial risk of the proxy, referred to as ungearing the beta, using the following formula. The equity beta multiplied by the value of equity divided by the value of equity plus the value of debt and net of tax, added to the debt beta, multiplied by the value of debt net of tax, divided by the value of equity, plus the value of debt net of tax. If the debt beta is zero, the second half of the formula can be ignored, and the value of debt net of tax is simply the value of debt multiplied by 1 minus t. 3. The new beta derived in step 2 only reflects the business risk and is referred to as an asset or ungeared beta. Before this can be used, therefore, it needs to be adjusted to reflect the finance risk of the company. The process for doing this is the opposite of the ungearing in step 2, uses the same formula as above, and is referred to as re-gearing. 4. The beta now obtained is an equity beta for the company that reflects the business risk associated with the new business and the finance risk associated with the debt levels of the underlying business. Using this beta in the CAPM formula will calculate an appropriate cost of equity, which can, in turn, be used to calculate a WAC. Thank you.